Hi all, how are you today? Good. How's it going? Good. So we have uh, someone on Zoom today, our guest speaker. Yes, we have Dr. Dasgupta uh, joining us from Premier Pain and Spine. Yeah. All right. Um, hi, Dr. Dasgupta. How are you today? Hi, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on the show. Thanks for joining the show today. Can you, well, first of all, can you introduce about yourself to our viewers? Sure. Uh, my name is Dr. Sanaba Dasgupta. I am a uh, I'm an anesthesiologist, but I've done subspecialty training in a specialized field called interventional pain management. So what we do is treat a variety of chronic and acute pain conditions for our patients, trying to help them get back to a better quality of life. Mm -hmm. All right. Thưa quý vị, hôm nay có một bác sĩ Dr. Gupta đây là đến từ công ty Premier Pain and Spine, nghĩa là một cái công ty chuyên về điều trị một cái hệ thống chuyên về điều trị vết thương này, làm giảm đau này và chuyên ngành của bác sĩ ở ngoài vết thương bình thường thì còn có um, về điều trị về cái xương sống nữa rồi thì uh, bác sĩ là có bằng cũng như bằng uh, license là physician ở bang Illinois mình rồi chúng ta cùng đi tìm hiểu về những cái uh, xung quanh những cái vấn đề về y tế này nhé alright thì let's go into a Q&A session today yep that sounds good so uh, doctor, if you could tell us your role at Premier Pain and Spine and um, uh, what you do to treat patients there. Sure. Uh, so I'm, I'm actually one of the founding uh, partners of Premier Pain and Spine. Uh, we started the practice about 11 years ago uh, in the Chicago area. So we went from basically one office in the back of a hospital and then uh, quickly expanded uh, to uh, five locations now. So. Uh, you know, it's been real pleasure to see it grow and, and serve the community and, and uh, be able to treat so many patients. It's, it's really just been a blessing, to be honest. Um, my role at, at the company is uh, uh, I work clinically, so I have my own book of patients that I see and I treat. Um, and I'm also responsible for um, just a, a day to day running and operations of the company as well. So I'm um, handling everything from the nuts and bolts type of stuff all the way to a uh, strategic uh, planning and vision of the company. But definitely my favorite part is still uh, continuing to treat all our uh, wonderful patients throughout the Chicago area. Đấy, thì thưa quý vị, uh, một chút về vai trò của bác sĩ ở công ty uh, Premier Pain and Spine PPS. Thì uh, bác sĩ là giám đốc cũng là người điều hành công ty này. Thì uh, công ty bệnh gọi như là phòng khám này, phòng khám uh, về chuyên về điều trị giảm đau và thương tích về uh, xương thì đây là những cái bệnh viện bác sĩ có lâu năm kinh kinh nghiệm và vận hành uh, cái 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 văn phòng này uh, về vấn đề về thương tích uh, bầm hay gì đấy hoặc là bị thương tích trong uh, về xương. And before uh, Taylor jumps on to her next question, can you tell us uh, where the locations are and how many people are part of Premier Pain and Spine? Sure, yeah. Uh, so we have office in uh, in Schaumburg and Downers Grove in Berwyn, downtown Chicago, and then we uh, staff some offices in uh, um, Elk Grove Village area as well. Um, we have uh, uh, on uh, part of our practice, as part of our practice, we have uh, five physicians currently as part of our practice. Um, we have physician assistants as well and about uh, 30 uh, support staff between all offices to help everything, everything run smoothly. Thì thưa quý vị nói về công ty PPS thì tôi có những bác sĩ có những cái chi nhánh ở những ở xung quanh những cái suburb những cái địa phương và gần Chicago này khoảng 5 địa điểm và hiện tại là có khoảng 5 người bác sĩ làm trực tiếp đi điều trị cho quý vị. Doctor, what education and training did you go through to become a pain management physician? Sure. Uh, good question. It was it was it was quite a bit. Um, we after, so after college, uh, you have to go to medical school. So that was uh, a four year process to uh, uh, you know finally graduate from medical school with your MD. Then uh, once you once you're done with medical school, you enter into whatever subspecialty of medicine uh, you chose. So uh, that that could be. Um, you know, uh, if you wanted to do family medicine or internal medicine or surgery, you would enter into that uh, residency training directly after medical school. So I, I chose anesthesia as my uh, as my um, residency training. So I, I went out to Philadelphia for that. 
um, at the University of Pennsylvania, and that residency is four years long. Um, after that's completed, uh, you can choose to practice as a general anesthesiologist, but uh, during my um, anesthesia residency, I got some exposure to interventional pain management during residency, and I loved it. Um, I loved, you know, being able to treat patients, um, uh, coming in with acute pain, doing a procedure, um, or your pain they've been suffering with for years, and doing a, a simple procedure to alleviate their symptoms, watching them walk out of the clinic happy. I thought it was amazing. So I, did, I knew then that that's what I wanted to do. Um, that required a uh, additional one year, what we call a fellowship. So that's an additional year of training, even past your, your residency. Um, so that all in, I was about nine years into training. Um, and then finally, when you, you finish your fellowship, that's when you are um, technically allowed to go out and, and practice your, um, your profession. Obviously, you know, if you pass all your board exams, which I did, and uh, my, first, uh, my first job, if you will, uh, right out of fellowship was actually starting Premier Pain and Spine. Um, and that's, that's what I've been doing since then. Thì thưa quý vị, những cái mà câu hỏi vừa đặt ra cho bác sĩ ở đây là cái những cái giáo dục và những cái training, những cái gì mà mình cần thiết để mà trở thành một cái người bác sĩ đi điều trị về vết thương, điều trị ở đâu thì cái 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 con đường mà nhìn chung phổ biến nhất cũng đã là thường là học lên trường y học của medical school thưa quý vị, sau khi tốt nghiệp thì lên med school, sau đấy thì học đi chuyên ngành, học xong khoảng tầm 4-5 năm ấy, thì mình đi vào những cái chuyên ngành, chuyên ngành thì bác sĩ Uh, uh, có mặt tại đây là Scripta thì bác sĩ và chuyên ngành về uh, là gây mê và sau đấy là chuyển sang những cái lĩnh vực chuyên môn hiện tại đang làm là về vết thương và điều trị ở về uh, xương sống. Right. So uh, my follow-up question for you is uh, can you describe the uh, PPS core strategy and mission? Yeah. So our, our, our core uh, strategy and, and mission of the company is uh, We, we like to use a multidisciplinary approach to um, help um, treat and alleviate chronic pain for our patients, helping them to achieve a uh, much better quality of life and, if possible, get them to as much of a pain-free life as possible. And uh, by multidisciplinary, I mean we like to use uh, not only procedures, but um, physical therapy, Um, we like to use uh, biofeedback, cognitive behavioral therapy, whatever uh, tools and means we have possible at our disposal. Um, uh, we'll use every um, cutting edge technology possible to try to improve patients' quality of life. Um, and, uh, you know, typically, you know, we, we will um, write medication uh, for patients. Some patients need medications, but uh, we, we've always tried to. Um, Uh, reduce or, or keep the amount of pain medication that patients are on as, as low as possible. Um, you know, we, we know for certain that um, high amounts of pain medication don't help people achieve a quality of life uh, that's substantial in the long run. So, you know, we, we really try to uh, utilize these other, other pillars of pain management in, in helping uh, people achieve a, a higher quality of life and, and alleviating uh, the burden of chronic pain. Right. Thank you. Uh, quý vị thành vừa đặt câu hỏi cho cho bác sĩ ở đây là những cái mà sứ mệnh cũng những cái cái giá trị cốt lõi của công ty luật uh, công ty um, của, của cái, cái bệnh viện phòng khám đa khoa phòng khám này của bác sĩ là gì? Thì uh, bác sĩ vừa đề cập là cũng là dùng, dùng những cái chuyên môn được đào tạo lâu năm uh, là hành nghề cũng có bằng cấp cũng có được uh, uh, cấp chứng chỉ và uh, những cái công nghệ cao tiên tiến nhất thì đấy sẽ được tổ hợp được sử dụng để mà Uh, dùng trong cái việc mà điều trị và bên cạnh đó là nói về vấn đề về chi phí ấy, thì chi phí đây thì thường là cố gắng sẽ giữ thấp thấp nó và cộng thêm với việc là quý vị có bảo hiểm nữa thì nó sẽ giúp trang trải khoản chi phí này cho cái việc điều trị trong trong những lĩnh vực này. So doctor, I have a follow up to Tom's question and you mentioned something about multidisciplinary multidisciplinary approach to treating patients. Can you expand on that? Um, I know sometimes our clients, uh, we handle personal injury cases, and our clients will oftentimes go to their primary care doctor who will then refer them to an orthopedic physician 
who then refers our clients to physical therapy. How does your practice fit into that puzzle and can people, while they're also seeing those treaters, come to your office as well for additional treatment? Yeah, no, <clears throat> excellent question. Yeah, um, we they can most definitely come uh, see us at, at any point in that that treatment algorithm. We, we actually tell our patients that the earlier that they come to see us, the better. Um, and, and that has to do with uh, pain if treated early before it sets up within the central nervous system um, is much, much easier to treat. So if, if pain persists, what happens is that the nerves in the central nervous system can actually rewire on a somewhat permanent basis. And that can help to propagate this pain, keep this pain kind of constantly moving. So even if you, for example, get a knee injury or a back injury and that gets fixed from an orthopedic perspective, well, you still, you see tons of patients, they still continue with pain. And, and a lot of that is, it has to do with the fact that they didn't receive adequate pain treatment early enough. And, and really that, that's where we kind of come in and we say to people, you know, do the physical therapy. We love physical therapy. It's great for people. We, we firmly believe in it. Um, but, you know, a lot of times there are treatments that we can render in addition to physical therapy that can really help to get people over that hump um, in many ways. Um, you know, for example, if somebody comes in with a, with a herniated disc, physical therapy is an excellent treatment for a herniated disc, but you may need some type of procedure to also help to reduce that pain, reduce that inflammation and swelling. Something such as an epidural, simple procedure such as an epidural steroid injection can be extremely helpful in these patients. It can reduce the inflammation. It can reduce that constant pain signal emanating from that disc. And when, that, when you get rid of that pain signal, it stops this uh, problem where the central nervous system can get um, too overexcited, if you will. And then they don't tend to develop or lead into chronic pain as, as, as frequently. In addition to that, treating the pain also just makes the physical therapy more effective. They're able to move more easily. They're able to engage in physical therapy more easily. We find that the results from the therapy gets to be, get, uh, gets much easier. Um, so that's really how we can slot in and be helpful um, in terms of treatment in, you know, you would want to see us uh, really, I, I would say at any point in the treatment algorithm, but sort of the earlier, the better, like I said, to, to really um, uh, get pain control early is key in helping to avoid the uh, progression of chronic pain in patients. And, and I think you'd asked about uh, multidisciplinary. Um, well, what that really means is that you use a multi-pronged approach to pain management where you're not just reliant on doing injections or medications, but you're using those, you're using those appropriately on patients that need them, but then you're also incorporating other aspects that we know work, for example, physical therapy, which is, which is highly effective. Um, it, there are um, um, biofeedback type of techniques that, that can also be helpful, cognitive behavioral therapy, things like that can be helpful. Um, so uh, using um, a multidisciplinary approach uh, to, to pain management generally tends to be the most effective. And, and we like to employ all of those um, techniques under one roof at our clinic. I think that's what really makes it special and sort of separates us from, from a lot of the other pain groups out there. Thưa quý vị, bác sĩ vừa đề cập thêm một cái vấn đề là khi mà mình bị những vấn đề mà xương cốt thì gì đấy mặc dù không liên quan lắm đến cái hệ thần kinh thì hệ thần kinh là thường là nó về cái xương sống bị là cái spine ấy. nhưng mà khi mà quý vị có bị đau đầu gối hay là đau gì đấy những cái điều đấy lệch đĩa đệm chẳng hạn nó tác động lên dây dây thần kinh ảnh hưởng đến toàn bộ cục diện trên hệ thần kinh trung ương cả cái cơ thể À, thì trong trường hợp như vậy thì mình khi mình phát hiện ra mình bị bệnh gì nặng nhẹ thôi mình cũng cần nên đi khám kỹ lưỡng tại vì nhiều khi một cái bị nhỏ như vậy nó sẽ ảnh hưởng đến cái cục diện à, toàn bộ bị lệch địa điểm thì lệch địa đệm thì nó sẽ ảnh hưởng đến cái hệ thần kinh toàn thân mình cho nên là cái mà quan trọng nhất đây vẫn là mình nên đi à, 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 cẩn trọng và nên à, 
ấy hơn trong những cái vấn đề mà điều trị những vết thương dù nó nhỏ thôi nhưng mà vẫn vẫn nên cần sự chăm sóc kỹ. So my next question is um, what what area do you specialize in and then what areas does your uh, facility Premier Pain and Spine specialize in in general? Yeah. So um, we we can treat pain from really any any condi- any part of the body. Um, uh, I, I would say that the majority of people that we see, though, they have uh, some type of spine issue. So uh, issues with their neck or their uh, low back are, are some of the primary re- uh, reasons that we uh, see people for. Um, we also treat a lot of joint pain, so knee issues, hip issues, shoulder issues, elbow, all, all types of orthopedic issues. Um, I would say those two are probably uh, the main uh, uh kind of categories of, of patients that we treat. Um, we also treat um, a, a lot, and, and those I would say are patients that, that may be on the more acute side, that, that more recently got injured and an injury at work and they've herniated a disc or they've fallen and, and they've hurt their knee. Uh, we also treat a significant amount of patients that have developed chronic pain. Um, so again, these are patients that maybe didn't, did not get aggressive pain management treatment early enough. They've Uh, they've moved on to, uh, unfortunately, the, the development of chronic pain. So they're okay from the surgical standpoint. The surgeon looks at their surgery, the fusion is fine, or the knee replacement looks good, but yet they continue to, to suffer um, you know, debilitating pain symptoms. They can't work, they can't walk, things like that. We treat a, um, quite a few patients like that. And you know, we, we always tell people in that, in that situation, like, look, this is not the end of the road. There are tons of treatment options for, for you. Um, we have high high success rate helping people that, that come to our office with, with symptoms like that. Um, everything from simple things such as physical therapy type that they may not have tried in the past, the advanced spinal cord stimulation techniques, which is a, a newer device where we implant uh, wires outside the spinal cord that helps to reduce or even eliminate that, that chronic pain that people feel from an old back injury or a knee injury or something something of that uh, that nature. So um, I would say that's sort of the, the um, uh, main main groups of people that we see uh, coming into the office. But you know, no matter what, I mean, we, we, we really treat every every type of pain condition under the sun. I mean, everything from headache, uh, so migraine headache, all the way down to uh, you know foot injuries. Um, Uh, you know, uh, uh, Achilles injuries, things like that. So from the whole top of the head to the bottom of the feet, any type of chronic pain or acute pain people have, we can handle it. Thưa quý vị, uh, câu hỏi của đặt ra cho bác sĩ ở đây là những cái mà về lĩnh vực um, điều trị uh, bị thương ấy, vết thương ấy, điều trị uh, đau nhức. Đau nhức thì uh, những lĩnh vực nào mà bệnh viện uh, chuyên chuyên biệt làm thì đây là có thể về bệnh đau nhức khớp này, đau nhức xương, đau nhức Uh, đầu gối này đau nhức vai về cơ và th- quan trọng là về xương thì uh, đấy là những cái lĩnh vực toàn toàn bộ cơ thể lĩnh vực mà bác bệnh viện đây là họ uh, uh, specialize và ngoài đấy ra thì còn có những cái thiết bị những cái dụng cụ y tế những cái thiết bị mà công nghệ cao có thể sử dụng trong cái việc mà điều trị uh, những cái loại uh, uh, đau nhức này nữa như là bác sĩ vừa ra, vừa đưa ra một ví dụ như một loại thiết bị gắn vào Uh, xương sống của quý vị để mà giảm bớt cái áp lực, giảm bớt cái uh, cái uh, ấy lên uh, toàn cái 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 khung xương thì đấy là một cái ví dụ cho nên là bệnh viện này thành xin nhắc lại là bệnh viện của bác sĩ này là chuyên về điều trị đau nhức, điều trị đau nhức và những cái vấn đề về đau đầu gối, đau vai, đau xương rồi đau uh, khớp này nọ thì đấy là những cái mà uh, bệnh viện uh, uh, chuyên làm. Dr. You mentioned spinal cord Uh, simulator injections procedures these sound expensive uh, what insurance do you take and what do you do if a patient does not have insurance yeah um, so the good thing is that all, all these procedures are covered by by insurance so um, you know, Medicare Blue Cross Aetna all, all these all these procedures are, are covered. so um, you know in general it, it's it, it's the same Um, as you know, any any type of doctor visit, um, so that that's uh, you know it makes it very easy. These procedures are very accessible for people um, to to receive and, and uh, 
you know, insurance pays for them just, just like they pay for anything else. Um, you know, if, if people don't have insurance, I mean, we work with them. I mean, we're, we're never going to leave, uh, you know, people hanging out to dry. You know, somebody comes in with chronic pain and, and significant pain issues. Um, you know, we work with patients all the time and, and that, you know, don't have insurance or are, are underinsured. And, you know, at the end of the day, our, our, our goal is, you know, we, we just want to help people. So, you know, if, you know, we understand that sometimes even, you know, a simple procedure can be expensive, I mean, you know, it can, it, it can, you know, really put a significant burden on, on somebody, but, you know, if they get that one procedure, it allows to go, them to go back to work and, and re-engage with their life. And, you know, that, that's, that's important to us and, you know, we'll, we'll uh, do whatever we can in our power to, uh, work with people to make sure that they can get the type of treatment that they need. A lot of our personal injury clients are hesitant at first to get treatment they need because of the cost. But exactly like you said, you know, we urge them get the treatment that you need, um, complete the treatment as t instructed by your doctor, and then some physicians will lean the file, so our firm will handle the bills. But especially if you have insurance, you know, people should not hesitate to get treatment that they need. Yes, that's correct. Correct. Thưa quý vị, câu hỏi vừa đặt ra cho bác sĩ ở đây là những cái bảo hiểm nào mà công ty bệnh viện của bác sĩ chấp nhận và nếu như trường hợp mà không có bảo hiểm thì sẽ như, sẽ như thế nào? Thì đây là một cái trường hợp mà nó bình thường, nó rất là phổ biến ở Mỹ. Thì khi quý vị đi khám ấy, thì quý vị cần phải có bảo hiểm y tế này. À, thì bệnh viện của bác sĩ là standard thôi, họ chấp nhận những cái loại bảo hiểm thông thường nhất thông thường nhất mà quý vị thường thấy như là bảo hiểm uh, Edna rồi bảo hiểm những cái bảo hiểm mà nó thông dụng bên cạnh đấy thì nếu như quý vị không có bảo hiểm ấy thì uh, bệnh viện vẫn tiếp tục vẫn sẽ làm việc và sẽ điều trị cho quý vị và không không phải là không có bảo hiểm thì không không được làm gì hết rồi thì đấy là câu hỏi tiếp theo của thành là tại sao cái điều trị mà về đau nhức này lại quan trọng mà nó cái 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 tầm quan trọng của nó là gì so I have a, a question for you. What is pain management and why is this so important? Sure, the, uh, the field of pain management is the uh, treatment of acute and, and chronic pain. Um, and, uh, you know, when I, when I first started, I, I don't think that we really understood a lot about pain management. We, we felt that it was, uh, you know, unless you had an injury that was immediately visible, well, why would, why would people have chronic pain? And our, our understanding of the field over even the last decade has, has come so far. Um, you know, we know that uh, chronic pain, especially chronic low back pain, is the, is the leading cause for disability in our country. Um, it, it costs our, our country um, uh, billions of dollars per year, leads to um, so much time off from work and time lost from family. Um, it's, it's a debilitating condition and, and it's sad because you know, maybe pain won't necessarily lead to death, but it really causes such an impact on people's lives that it, it can uh, really make, you know, any every aspect of life so difficult. So, you know, I, I think that the awareness about chronic pain has come a long way. Um, I think people are much more open to going out and getting treatment about it now. And, you know, to us, that that's, that's those are all excellent things. Um, and uh, you know, the more people are aware, and the more they come out and get treatment, then that that's what really allows us to finally get out and use our our uh, toolbox to to help these people. Um, so chronic pain, you know, kind of getting back to your question, is is defined as pain that generally tends to last for more than three months. Um, again, we like to we don't want people to get to that point, which is why we sort of advocate for for earlier treatment of pain. Um, if pain has been around for three months, we would say definitely, you know, go see somebody who specializes in pain management because at that point, you know, something needs to be done. It's unlikely that it's just going to start to go away on its own. Um, prior to that, if your patients are noticing that this pain is lingering, it's not improving um, the way that it should, you know, we would encourage them to, to see a pain management physician because, you know, that's indicating to them that um there's something going on that the body can't handle on its own and um sometimes the body just needs a little bit of help to get over that hump and, and fix fix whatever is, is going wrong 
Um, and, you know, people, you know, people really know their bodies the best. You know, if, uh, if a patient has an injury and, you know, typically, you know, they may have a history of throwing their back out, it gets better usually within a week, but this one's lingering, it's lasting for three to four weeks, you know, uh, off some injury, you know, they know that this is different from their normal uh, situation and that, you know, I, I need to do something a little bit more aggressive about it. So um, we would encourage those patients to definitely come in and, and, and seek, uh, you know, um, care from a pain management physician at that point to, again, ensure that the pain doesn't develop into a, into a chronic pain type of picture. Uh, thì câu hỏi mà thành vừa đặt ra cho bác sĩ ở đây là cái tại sao cái, cái, cái điều trị mà về đau nhức thì nó là rất là quan trọng và tại vì khi mà quý vị bị đau nhức ấy nó có nó có thường là những cái dấu hiệu những cái bệnh mà nó nghiêm trọng hơn sau này ví dụ bị đau nhức xương đau nhức về uh, khớp đau nhức về vai đấy là những cái dấu hiệu mà khi mình tuổi tác mình 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 nhiều ấy mình cao hơn thì nó sẽ là cái ngoài những cái mặc dù với ban đầu thì nó nhỏ thôi nhưng mà đó là một cái dấu hiệu một cái vấn đề rất lớn hơn thì khi mà mình phát hiện ra mà mình điều trị sớm thì quý vị đấy là một cái cái mà phòng ngừa phòng ngừa những cái rủi ro, những cái khả năng, những cái căn bệnh mà nó nghiêm trọng hơn xảy ra trong tương lai. Bởi vậy, cái rất là quan trọng khi mà quý vị biết là uh, điều trị sớm và uh, nghiêm túc hơn đối với những cái dấu hiệu, những cái căn bệnh mà bị đau nhức ở trong cơ thể con người như vậy. So, doctor, you've described some of the services offered at Premier Pain and Spine. Uh, in general, I was wondering if you could discuss a handful of them in more detail, uh, what they entail and uh, how these services go about treating your patients sure uh so for example uh one of the more more chronic or one of the most common uh things that we see at our, our clinic is, is uh, back pain so low back pain uh you know it, it helps to sort of uh look at why are they developing that back pain to begin with so you know when when you come see us at our clinic uh you know we're going to go over all your old medical records um uh including notes from other doctors if those are present um looking at uh we'll look at your old mri results um if they're too old we may opt to order uh, another mri to, to get some up-to-date pictures as to what's happening so based on all that we'll we'll uh, take all that information and come up with an accurate diagnosis as to what is actually causing that pain for you um typically we see for uh, low back pain patients that the primary causes of, of back pain in them would be um, a herniated disc. If they, uh, that's the pri- one of the primary uh, causes. Another primary cause is arthritis in the low back in the facet joints. And the third primary cause is something called uh, sacroiliac joint disease or sacroiliitis. Um, all three of those uh, treatment, all three of those um, areas of the body require separate treatment. So it's extremely important in the beginning to nail down an appropriate and accurate diagnosis. And I, I think that's really one thing that separates us from a lot of other clinics out there is that we um, put a lot of time and effort into that initial portion of the visit because we don't want to sit there and do multiple procedures on people that aren't going to work trying to pin down the cause of their problem. Uh, we want to get it right from the first time. So we spend a significant amount of time making sure that we have the correct diagnosis up front. If, for example, we do our uh, go through everything and we see that, okay, it looks like a herniated disc is most likely what's causing your pain, we would do a simple procedure called an epidural steroid injection, which uh, involves taking a, a very small needle and using it, using an x-ray machine. And uh, under x-ray guidance, we advance that needle to around where that disc is bulging. And we inject a little bit of steroid medication around that disc. And that helps to reduce significantly the inflammation and swelling associated with that disc. Um, oftentimes a disc is pressing on a nerve, hence why patients may feel pain shooting down their leg. So that treatment can also alleviate any type of uh, shooting pain or sciatica type of pain that they may be feeling from that herniated disc. If we do our homework and find that, well, it's actually the back arthritis in the facet joint that's causing the pain, there's not really no evidence of a herniated disc, then we may opt for a completely different type of procedure called a facet joint infection which is again, we take a, a small needle, but instead of advancing it near the disc, we advance it under x-ray guidance into a very small joint, just running along the sides of the spine. And these joints allow our spines to move, to rotate, bend uh, you know, um, forward and backwards, and they can develop arthritis uh, within them just like any other joints in our body. So uh, 
our, our goal in that procedure is we inject a very tiny amount of steroid and local anesthetic into that arthritis or arthritic joint uh, next to the spine. Um, if we do, uh, again, go through the images and we see that, okay, it's actually the sacroiliac joint that's causing the pain. Well, then it's, again, a completely different type of procedure. And again, we would use an x-ray machine to guide a very, very small needle into that joint space, injecting some steroid into there. So I, those are just three quick examples of some very common procedures that we do at our clinic. Um, and, you know, we, those I would consider very simple um, and we do more, more complex procedures. For example, if somebody um, fractures part of their spine, there's a procedure called a kyphoplasty where we can actually take some cement and inject it into the spine, helping to stabilize that joint or, or helping to stabilize that fracture. And that's a much more uh, involved procedure. Um, so there's a whole myriad of procedures that we can do. Um, I think the, the important thing um, is to make sure that the diagnosis though from the start is correct because that way you're getting the right procedure for the right condition and that's really what's going to be the, the key here is making sure that you get treated with the correct procedure so that then you uh that you feel better much quicker and also you're not having to go through multiple procedures that may not be effective thì thưa quý vị câu hỏi vừa đặt ra cho bác sĩ ở đây là những cái nào những cái dịch vụ nào là uh, cơ bản và những cái dịch vụ nào là nó đi chuyên sâu thì uh, bác sĩ vừa đưa ra những cái ví dụ như là rất là chuyên sâu về y khoa như là khi mà quý vị bị uh, thường là những cái phổ biến mà người ta bệnh nhân hay đến phòng khám để mà chữa là những cái bị uh, đau nhức cái uh, đau lưng đau lưng dưới về phía thấp phía thấp của lưng thì đấy là một trong những cái uh, bệnh thường phổ biến thì những cái uh, điều trị những cái uh, phương pháp thì quý bác sĩ vừa ra một ví dụ như là có thể là uh, chích vào đấy một cái uh, một cái lượng uh, hóa chất gì đấy để mà nó uh, điều hòa lại cái sự bền vững của cái xương và đấy uh, và thêm một cái nữa là có thể can thiệp vào bằng y khoa như là mổ này và chích thêm một trài một 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 loại uh, thuốc điều trị để mà giúp cho xương nó lành hoặc là nó nó khớp nó lành nhanh hơn thì đủ để thấy là cái mức độ mà nó về chuyên sâu về những cái mà khoa học công nghệ cao thì đều được sử dụng để điều trị những cái vấn đề mà về xương khớp và đau nhức trên cơ thể con người. Do you help people who have been injured on the job or in a personal injury accident? Yes, yeah, so that's a that's a pretty decent size um chunk of our, our patient population. Um, we treat a lot of um, workman's comp and, and personal injury patients. Um, you know, we understand that a lot of times that their, uh, you know, their injuries tend to be a little bit more acute. Um, you know, maybe somebody just was injured, uh, you know, a few days before coming in to, in to see us. And, uh, you know, a lot of um, workup, you know, imaging, testing, things like that may not have been completed at the time, you know, and they're sort of wondering what's going on, you know, so um you know and you know a lot of times they're kind of scared of the system or what's going to happen and, you know what what's this mean for my job and and you know my treatment and things like that and you know we you know we we take our time you know we're you know what we want people to know we want people to know in that situation assure them that you know we're going to do everything we can to you know help them get them back to work and and uh you know uh or you know get back to the quality of life that they had before um you know and uh we we take our uh you know initial meeting with them and then we'll we'll move forward from there and make sure that we we cover all bases you know cross all our t's and dot all our i's order all the pro appropriate testing uh make sure that we figure out exactly what's going on and get them started down the right treatment algorithm from the beginning yeah thưa quý vị bác phòng khám của bác sĩ điều trị những người mà bị thương tật trên đi khi đi làm tích tích cá nhân này gây ra bởi những cái như là công công việc và hoặc là bị uh, tai nạn xe cộ thì những cái đấy đều được uh, bác sĩ uh, phòng khám của bác sĩ là nó uh, xử lý những cái vấn đề như vậy và uh, điều uh, như là uh, uh, khám bệnh này chẩn đoán bệnh này và đưa ra những cái phương pháp mà điều trị điều trị phù hợp đối với căn bệnh đấy là bác sĩ đều uh, phòng khám đều uh, quan tâm và đều uh, uh, đi theo trình tự uh, đúng uh, trình tự để mà giải quyết những cái vấn đề mà bị thương tích như vậy. 
So how many pain management visits does insurance usually cover? Uh, there's really not too much of a limit. If you're talking about, um, uh, so just a standard office visit, it's like any type of other office visit. And uh, there's, uh, you know, really, there's no limit on that. Um, uh, for the procedures, depending on, on uh, what type of procedure it is that uh, you're, you're requiring, you know, th those may be limited to six to eight uh, per calendar year. Um, but we usually find that the, the limits are, are generally pretty generous. Um, we don't really run into problems with that. Um, usually we can treat and get people feeling better kind of under the, the limit that, that most insurance companies set for the number of visits. Um, but, you know, again, just to see us um, to, you know, discuss options or maybe adjust medications or see how the physical therapy is going and things like that, there, there's no limit in, to the number of visits you can have. Thì cô, thưa quý vị, cô Thành vừa đặt ra cho bác sĩ ở đây là những cái khi mà mình đi khám bác sĩ như vậy thì mình bảo hiểm ấy thường là cover bao nhiêu lần thì cái này là thường là 6 đến 8 lần nhưng mà cũng tùy thưa quý vị, tùy cái trường hợp và tùy vào cái bảo hiểm mà quý vị mua có thể nhiều hơn, có thể ít hơn nhưng mà thường ấy là từ 6 đến 8 lần. Doctor, could you tell us what a soft tissue injury is and do you oftentimes see soft tissue injuries uh, as a result of car accidents? Yes, so uh, that is very, very common in, in car accidents to see uh, soft tissue injury. Um, you know, in, in general, it, soft tissue injury is considered injury that's um, not part of the bony skeleton. Um, so it could involve tendons, ligaments, uh, or even the muscles themselves. Um, you know, so I, I'd say a, a good example of that is somebody who's just been in a car accident and, um, you know, let's say they um, get, uh, you know, hit by somebody from the rear and it, it causes a whiplash injury. So their head moves forward and back very quickly. Um, we see a lot of people uh, develop uh, neck pain from that very, very significant neck pain. And uh, you'll get in maybe some detailed imaging of the neck, such as an MRI, and everything looks good as far as the discs and the bones are concerned. Nothing's broken. They don't have a slip disc. There's no pressure on the nerves or anything like that. But you'll see on the MRI that there's a lot of spasm or a constant tightening of the neck muscles. And, th and that clues us in that there's, there's a soft tissue injury because that tends to be what happens when muscles get injured. They tend to tighten and they, they tend to spasm. So we see these types of soft tissue injuries a lot in patients who, who, who had, you know, a, a whiplash injury like this. Um, and uh, treatments for it are, are, are very effective. And what we would do is, is get somebody started in, in physical therapy and uh, maybe put them on some type of muscle relaxer to start to reduce some of that spasm. But one of the most effective treatments that we do are uh, called trigger point injections under ultrasound guidance, where we actually use a machine, an ultrasound machine, and we're able to physically look, visualize where that muscle is injured, where it's spasming. When we see that area on our, our monitor, we inject a very small amount of uh, steroid and local anesthetic, and it helps to reduce the inflammation, the swelling, and the spasm associated with that soft tissue injury. So yes, it's very common. Um, you know, oftentimes it is misdiagnosed as a non-soft tissue injury. And we see that, uh, you know, a lot of patients needlessly suffering from soft tissue injury for a prolonged period of time because it wasn't treated appropriately from the start. Um, but once they do receive appropriate treatment, it tends to respond very well. Thưa quý vị, câu hỏi của đặt ra cho bác sĩ ở đây là những cái mà chấn thương về mô mềm là gì và uh, những cái chấn thương vậy mô mềm nó có uh, phổ biến khi mà bị tai nạn xe cộ hay không? Thì uh, chấn thương về mô mềm hay là những cái chấn thương mà nó không bị vào sâu bên trong như là bị xương và bị khớp. Chấn thương mô mềm mà thường là ở da hoặc là bị cơ bên ngoài. Thì những cái chấn thương như vậy uh, thì bác sĩ uh, cùng uh, bệnh viện phòng khám của bác sĩ là cũng người ta cũng xử lý những vấn đề đấy luôn thường là chúng ta sẽ trích vào những một lượng uh, một lượng nhỏ thuốc uh, kháng sinh hoặc là thuốc steroid để mà, để mà giúp cho cái vết thương đấy nó không bị uh, uh, phồng lên không bị uh, uh, sưng lên đấy cũng là một trong những cái mà phổ biến những cái chữa uh, chuyên môn phổ biến cho đến phòng khám này là về những cái điều trị mô mềm ngoài da hoặc là ngoài cơ
You've already touched on this a bit, but how does pain management treatment help soft tissue injuries? Yeah, so uh, it's, uh, we, we imply, I, I would say again, we employ a real multidisciplinary approach to, to soft tissue injury, you know? And, uh, you know, unfortunately, untreated soft tissue injury can lead to chronic pain just like anything else can. So if it's sort of left untreated or undiagnosed for uh, a longer period of time, over three months, we see it becoming a real uh, chronic issue for people that then becomes uh, quite difficult to treat. So uh, our approach to soft tissue injury is to, is to sort of be, um, you know, be a little bit more aggressive with it up front. So, you know, if we see somebody who uh, with clear soft tissue injury, they have not done physical therapy, or let's say they've done inappropriate physical therapy, for, uh, for example, physical therapy that was not geared towards the soft tissue portion of it. Maybe they've been misdiagnosed as having a problem with their spine and their therapy was geared more towards the spine. Well, that's not necessarily going to help the soft tissue portion of the injury. So we would get that person back into therapy that's more appropriate and, and targeted towards that, that soft tissue injury. Um, there are certain types of medications that can be very helpful for soft tissue injury. A lot of these are, are non-opiate, they're not addictive, they're not habit forming. So we always like to avoid those types of medications in people if at all possible. Um, a lot of these are topical formulations that are easy to apply that, that work just in the area that you put them. So we, we tend to lean on some on medications like that. And then from a procedural standpoint, we uh, would uh, rely on treatments such as these uh, trigger point injections and uh, where we would again use the ultrasound machine to uh, guide the needle exactly into the area where um, the uh, soft tissue injury um, is located and um, put a small amount of treatment medication down um, in that area. So, you know, I, I would say that that's the um, general approach to, to treating soft tissue injury at our clinic. And, and you know, again, it, it's, um, you know, it, it, it's, it all comes down to diagnosis, you know, uh, making sure that it's diagnosed appropriately from the start um, is really the key here so that people are getting the appropriate treatment from the very beginning. That's when people tend to have the best outcomes. And if a patient is undergoing physical therapy treatment, they're still experiencing continuous pain. At what point do they contact you or a, a pain management doctor? You know, when when do they make that decision? I uh, we actually encourage people to see us. Um, you know, again as early as possible. But if they're having pain during physical therapy, you know, they shouldn't hesitate. They don't need to complete the treatment of therapy first and then call us. If they're having pain during therapy, they should call. We should treat that'll help to reduce their pain. It's gonna make the therapy so much more effective too, if we're, we're able to do that. So we work pretty closely with, with a, a different groups of physical therapists where we'll, we'll actually provide treatment, possibly let's say for example, a trigger point injection, and then they'll go to physical therapy uh, right after we do our procedure. And then the therapist is able to get much better range of motion, the patient's able to do a lot more during therapy, push themselves, because a lot of therapy is sort of getting past, uh, you, you know, the, the like a, a wall that you may have and sort of breaking past that in small increments, right? You go, you know, 5% more on Monday, then 5% more on Wednesday, then 5% more on Friday. And then if you, uh, if we are able to um, sort of alleviate the pain before you go into therapy, it makes it much easier for patients to do that. I think that's a very positive effect on patients too. It, 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 it acts as a positive reinforcement that they're really doing well and making good progress in their, uh, in their physical therapy. So um, most people that we see in our clinics that are um, uh, you know, coming to see us for a pain management standpoint, well, they tend to see us before they've even done physical therapy. So the majority of the patients that see us haven't done any physical therapy at that point. Uh, we tend to be I would, I'd almost consider us gate, gatekeepers uh, where, you know, you would get some type of injury, whether that's chronic or acute. And, you know, really, we should be the first people that you see. You come in, you see us, we order the appropriate testing, uh, um, you know, get the appropriate referrals made. I mean, if, if it requires an orthopedic referral or a neurosurgical referral, you know, we'll do that right away. If it doesn't require that, then we can stick to physical therapy, maybe some of the procedures that we do 
to help help treat people. But um, again, you know, the earlier uh, people come in to see us, the better. Thưa quý vị, câu hỏi vừa đặt ra cho bác sĩ ở đây là tại vì khi tại vì cái cái việc mà điều trị về vết bị đau nhức ấy, tại sao nó lại quan trọng để mà cho những cái vấn đề mà vì uh, uh, bị uh, mô mềm những cái vết thương mềm như vậy thì bác sĩ vừa đề cập những vấn đề là khi mà chúng ta uh, tìm hiểu chúng ta về chẩn đoán cái bệnh thì càng sớm ấy, thì cái khả năng mà cái bệnh đấy cái cái quá trình điều trị ấy, nó sẽ hiệu quả hơn rất là nhiều lần so với việc là quý vị uh, khi mà phát hiện mình bị đau nhức khớp đau nhức uh, lưng hay là bị những cái mô mềm gì đấy mà chúng ta chờ lâu chúng ta không có những cái biện pháp hiệu quả hoặc là chúng ta thiếu được cái bỏ đi bỏ đi cái uh, cải thiện chức năng phục hồi chức năng sau cái quá trình điều trị thì uh, nó cũng là một cái bước mà nó quan trọng trong cả một cái quá trình như thế này thì mình phải bác sĩ bệnh viện phòng khám là những cái nơi mà họ uh, tư vấn cho quý vị cho quý vị một cách tốt nhất uh, cách mà đi từ uh, bài bản như thế nào để mà điều trị một cách hiệu quả nhất là chẩn đoán để điều trị và cuối cùng là phục hồi chức năng So, uh, does PPS also treat patients based on lien? Uh, uh, on lien? Lien, yes. I'm sorry. Oh, no problem. Uh, yes, we, we do. We treat patients based on lien. All right. Thì uh, Thành vừa hỏi là uh, quý vị, uh, cái phòng khám này có chữa bệnh nhân mà trong trường hợp mà không có bảo hiểm không? Thì câu trả lời là có của bác sĩ. Yeah, and Tan, I think what's important for the viewers to know about uh, doctors who are willing to treat patients on a lien, for mm. example, if you're involved in a car accident and you need medical treatment and you're concerned about the medical bills mm. and who's going to pay for them, uh, what doctors will do um, is provide the treatment and then rather than send the client or the patient a bill, they would send our office a bill and then when it comes time to settle the case mm -hmm. with the at-fault driver, the insurance company, we would use those settlement funds to pay any type of doctor bills, which is essentially what a lien is. So mm -hmm. it's important for the viewers to know that um, whether you have insurance or not or whether you're concerned about medical bills, it's good to know that mm -hmm. the folks at Premier Pain and Spine will work with various insurance companies and they will also mm -hmm lean any type of file which yes. means the clients don't pay mm -hmm. and it would just come out of the settlement funds because people are always concerned after car accidents or any type of personal injury mm -hmm. who's going to pay all these bills and so it's good to know that premier pain and spine will do that send us the bill and we'll mm -hmm. take care of it at the end from the settlement proceeds okay uh, thưa quý vị uh, luật sư michael vừa thêm nữa, nữa là cái lien ở đây nghĩa là trong trường hợp quý vị không có khả năng trả nợ thì uh, bệnh viện phòng khám vẫn làm việc và vẫn uh, Uh, làm việc với bảo hiểm này nếu như không có bảo hiểm thì, thì quý vị làm việc với một cái quỹ gì đấy để mà uh, mình dàn xếp mình thỏa, thỏa đáng cái chi phí cuối cùng cho nên là quý vị không lo những vấn đề đấy về quý vị mà có bảo hiểm hay không có bảo hiểm ấy, thì vẫn được uh, điều trị còn lại chi phí thì mình sẽ làm việc sau sau khi cái, cái, cái quá trình điều trị đấy so doctor we have a couple more questions for you and this one is uh, some advice that you can give so Um, initially, I was going to ask you what's the best advice you give your patients, but I also think it's important if you could also give some advice to maybe people who are viewing or watching this show who aren't yet your patients or haven't seen a pain management doctor. You know, what type of advice do you give people who are experiencing chronic pain at home, who haven't seen a pain management doctor, and then what's your best advice when patients do make it to you and they walk in the door? What do you tell them? Yeah, I mean, my best advice I could say is, you know, um, is is don't don't hesitate um, to to seek treatment. Uh, you know, I, we see a lot of people that, you know, they, they've gone on with their pain for so long that it just becomes a uh, a, a normal part of their life, and, and you know, I don't think they realize until after they receive treatment, you know, what what a huge impact that pain has been having on their quality of life. I mean. You know, people are resilient. You know, that if they have a chronic hip issue or a knee issue or a back issue, they find ways to work around it. You know, I mean, they'll modulate the way, you know, they get out of the car or they won't engage in a certain activity that they used to like because they know that's going to aggravate their pain. You know, they won't pick up their kids. They won't go for runs anymore, even though they used to love doing those types of things. Um, so, you know, they, they, they learn to live with it, but I, I don't think they realize really how much they've had to compromise until they finally come in and receive treatment. And they say, wow, 
you know, I, I just didn't realize how much this had been impacting my life, how, how I, you know, just had, uh, you know, just kind of adjusted my life to live with this pain. And, and you know, we, we tell people that you shouldn't have to do that, that you don't have to change the whole way you live just to, to deal with this pain. Let's deal with the pain and get you back to the life that you want to live. And um, that, that's really what I would, I, I would tell our, our viewers, um, you know, small example, but, uh, you know, I, you know, have, have, we treat a lot of migraine headache as well. And, um, you know, one of the treatments that we render for that is Botox. And we, we had a, uh, I had a patient the other day who, um, you know, she didn't really feel that the migraines were that big of an impact. We did the Botox treatment and she's been completely headache free. For, for three months now, no migraines. And she told me the other day in clinic that she's, she hasn't felt this way in 20 years. She didn't realize what a huge impact it had on her life. Um, that, that, you know, with the migraines, she was snapping at her kids and short tempered and, uh, you know, just going to sleep early all the time. And now, you know, she has a completely different perspective on life. And, uh, you know, she was just very grateful for that. And it was really satisfying to hear from, from my perspective, that, that we could make such a such a change uh, in, in a person's life. So, um, you know, I, I would say that that would be my my main advice is is you know don't hesitate. Um, you know, see, you know, even if you've been told in the past that there is no effective treatment, uh, you know, there's always something that you know a, a new set of eyes can see differently and um, some treatment that can be rendered that can be helpful for people. Um, so that, that's really, I, I'd say, the advice that I give to most of the people listening that are, are kind of on the fence or wondering, you know, if they should receive treatment or not. Thì uh, câu hỏi vừa đặt ra cho bác sĩ là những có lời khuyên nào, có lời khuyên nào cho đến, đến với những bệnh nhân mà liên quan đến những cái vấn đề mà bị uh, đau nhức về cơ thể người. Thì uh, bác sĩ nói là chúng ta luôn cần phải quan tâm đến sức khỏe này, cần phải như có vấn đề gì đấy thì luôn luôn đến bệnh viện đến phòng khám để được những cái tư vấn những cái bác sĩ chuyên môn đấy người ta luôn luôn có những cái giải pháp ưu, tối ưu nhất cho quý vị để mà điều uh, điều trị được cái cái vết thương những cái đau nhức trên cơ thể của người như là bị đau nhức uh, khớp gối này đau nhức về lưng đau nhức về vai thì uh, mặc dù mà mình nghĩ là không có thuốc đâu như gì đấy nhưng mà phòng khám bây giờ hiện đại công nghệ hiện đại luôn luôn sẽ có những cái phương pháp điều trị tốt nhất cho quý vị if someone is struggling with pain management, what is the best way to schedule an initial evaluation or appointment at Premier Pain and Spine? Sure. So there's multiple channels people can use to schedule appointments with us. Uh, there's uh, right on our website, uh, patients can do a, a quick form fill. It takes you know, about 10 seconds with some of their contact information. And that gets sent to our, our staff immediately for uh, somebody to call them back to uh, get them scheduled. Uh, they can always call. Um, our phone number is, is again, uh, on our website. 847-519-4701 uh, is the main number. Um, and they can uh, get patched through uh, to our uh, scheduling line. Um, we always have somebody uh, on that line during uh, normal business hours. Um, so those are our probably the, the two best ways to, to get in touch with our clinic um, would be through the form fill or um, calling our main number. Um, there's a there's email address as well on our website. Um, so if you know patients aren't comfortable with the first two options, email, um, we always check it, they're always returned. So um, if people want to schedule just by sending a simple email, that's fine as well. Thì uh, thưa quý vị, câu hỏi của đặt ra đây là những cái cách nào mà mình uh, thực hiện những quy trình nào để mà mình lên một cái schedule, một cho một cái lịch khám, lên lịch khám ở bệnh viện. Thì uh, bác sĩ vừa nêu ra, chúng ta phải đến đền đơn, uh, làm đơn thì mất tầm vài giây thôi. Hoặc là có số điện thoại của bệnh viện và trên đấy nữa chúng tôi có cả email. Và xin quý vị thì những vấn đề này thì liên lạc của chúng tôi, số điện thoại là 773 906 999. Thì anh Quý Ngọc chúng tôi có những rất nhiều luật sư và rất nhiều những cái mối quan hệ những cái bệnh viện những bác sĩ ở đây và họ sẽ là người giúp quý vị nếu quý vị có bất kỳ lý do bất kỳ những cái khó khăn nào về mặt pháp lý về mặt sức khỏe thì hãy xin hãy liên lạc cho anh Quý Ngọc à, thông qua đài rồi và đây cũng là chương trình ngày hôm nay là khép lại ngày bây giờ 
uh, chủ đề là những về thương tích về cá nhân thương tích về bị uh, trên cơ thể người uh, thì quý vị nào có câu hỏi thêm thì xin vui lòng uh, gọi đến đài hoặc là comment trên trang Facebook của chúng tôi là VSE 1040 chúng tôi sẽ giải đáp hết những câu hỏi đấy rồi thanks uh, Michael Taylor and uh, thanks doctor for joining the show today uh, really appreciate your participation thanks for having us on yeah thanks doctor we appreciate it <cười>